thank you for joining with me. We are with Ken Wapnick, PhD, in his journey through the text of A Course in Miracles. And today we are on Chapter 5, Healing and Wholeness. We are picking up our reading in the introduction. Within our experience in the bodily world, we can understand that as our problems are manifest in special relationships, it is there that the Holy Spirit's healing seems to occur. In truth, there are no relationships between bodies because they do not exist, and relationships are simply projections of the mind's thoughts. Yet, as long as we believe we are bodies interacting with other bodies, our experience must be that the Holy Spirit helps us heal these relationships. Healing, however, occurs only in the mind, and strictly speaking, it is not even the Holy Spirit who heals. We are the ones who heal, since we are the ones who choose against the Holy Spirit. This mistaken choice is the origin of all sickness, as correcting it is the source of healing. The Holy Spirit does nothing except be that loving thought whose presence in our minds is the call to choose Him instead of the ego. The Holy Spirit takes what the ego has made and reinterprets it. He does not transcend it. As in the growth fuge, the theme I called the melody of grace does not become the dominant part of the end of the fugue, but rather transforms the angry or ego part. In subsequent chapters, Jesus will explain how the Holy Spirit transforms our special relationships. Because we have concepts of God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus that are the body-oriented, that are body-oriented, excuse me, the image of Homo sapiens, the Course uses them, but with transformed content. Another example is where Jesus takes various statements of the Old and New Testaments, one more terrible than the next, and reinterprets them, showing Helen and Bill how he can reinterpret the vicious and hateful things they had done in their lives and cleanse them of their errors. Incidentally, this is not to say that those reinterpretations reflect the biblical meaning. Jesus' point again was to illustrate how the same form can express a different content, how our special relationships, which had the purpose of protecting guilt, can become the means of undoing guilt, reflecting the eternal life of heaven instead of the viciousness of the ego's thought system of death. The point of this is that as we look at what A Course in Miracles has to say about the Holy Spirit, we should not forget that it is not the words that are important, but their content of echoing the right-minded melody that recalls to us heaven's love and gently leads us there. I love that. And I just want to add, because I thought, I didn't think, I just didn't think that's the thing. I didn't realize that special relationships are not just between bodies. They're with things and titles and our own bodies and anything, anything that's not love, you know, that we're focused on. So, you know, special relationships are, I've always thought that like they were my love relationship with my husband or my friends or so forth, but they're not. They're just any, anything that separates us from God. Um, it's funny, I didn't, that never really hit me until recently, so I thought I would share that. Maybe it'll help somebody. The Holy Spirit. This passage is a beautiful expression of how the Holy Spirit works. The voice of the Holy Spirit does not command because it is incapable of arrogance. 
Jesus is telling us that those who command in the sense of dominating are filled with arrogance because they are telling God he is wrong about his unified son. Separation becomes the reality, and therein is born the belief in differences that gets expressed in lording power over others. It is not demand because it does not seek. The Holy Spirit's voice does not demand that we do something, for he knows that there is nothing to be done and nothing to control. The truth is, I'm sorry, the truth of the atonement needs merely to be accepted by the mind. It does not overcome because it does not attack. There can be no triumph in love, for how can oneness conflict with itself? Only in dreams is this possible, and dreams need only be awakened from, not healed, or overcome. It merely reminds, it is compelling only because of what it reminds you of. The voice for God reminds us of the song of heaven, the love of God that is still with us and which we choose when we return to our right minds. Since it has always been present, all we need do is remember it is there. Learning to forgive, which is seeing the face of Christ in our brothers, is what causes this memory of God and his Son to be restored to our awareness. It brings your mind the other way, remaining quiet even in the midst of the turmoil you may make. My example of Beethoven's Gross Fuge expresses this idea. In the midst of our tumultuous lives, there remains the quiet memory or melody that says, My brother, choose again. Despite our terror, anger, or despair, the loving presence of mercy and truth calls us back to itself, reminding us, our feelings notwithstanding, that we can make another choice. I am going to go ahead and stop there today. We will pick this up tomorrow. I thank you so much for joining with me. I hope that you have a most beautiful day, and I love you, and I appreciate you following me along here. Um, Yes, that's it for now. (laughs) Thank you.